Hi, how's it going? In the previous video, we had a look at texture arrays, or um, onion textures, as they're sometimes called. In this video, I want to have a look at an alternate method which allows us to bundle up all of our resources and have access to them on the fly in our shader, and that is bindless textures. The concept of a bindless texture is that we create our sampler object, our combined texture sampler, all of that, on the GPU, and that's, you know, sitting on the GPU, taking up some amount of VRAM or something. And then we have what's called a handle, which is simply some sort of 64-bit integer, which refers to that object. And... The thing with a handle is we can then recall that in the shader. And the really cool thing about that is a 64-bit integer can be packed into a buffer. So we can have a buffer containing the handles of all the materials for all the objects in our scene. And then we can simply pass in an integer which indicates which object we're looking at. We can use that to fetch the appropriate handle, and that recalls the appropriate material on the fly. There are some benefits to this. One benefit is that we get the full flexibility of any sort of shader we want. Sorry, sampler, any sort of sampler we want. So, for instance, if all of our objects are going to use array layers, well then we can do that. Instead of worrying about, oh, we've got an array layer, how are we going to pack array layers into array layers? Oh, that sounds repetitive. I keep saying array layers anyway, but it's, it's good. Now, disclaimer, there's a strong chance this will not necessarily improve performance, but what this will do is it will move us towards a programming model where our resources are bundled up ahead of time. And the benefit of that is we can go on to the gold standard, which is GPU-driven rendering. Anyway, so let's get into it. So what I've got here is I've got my renderer, and I'm going to need to make a few adjustments. I'm going to need to have a buffer, which is going to store all my textures. And rather than loading all the textures into one material, Every mesh is going to have its own material. Um, but in addition, I'm also going to have a vector of um, handles. Now, while I'm at it, I might as well rip the Band-Aid off. And that is, I'm going to undo all the work that I did before. Sorry. So I'll go over and find my mesh. Description, if I can find it. Here we are. So in addition to all of this, I'm going to include a material. And then I'm going to go to my model factory. And I'm going to change this back to, yeah, load 2D material. And I'm going to put that back and make it private function. Again, not a super big deal whether it's private or public, but what I'm going to do is when I create the mesh at the time I'm going to load in that material again like I was doing before. I know, I know. So yeah, and maybe I'll take a file name. And I just realized that I set this as texture 2D when it should have been texture 2D array. Oh, well, it worked, right? Anyway, 
So I've got that function that's going to load in my material and return the unsigned integer representing it. I can go up to the point where I'm sort of making that mesh and I can pop in here and say, all right, uh, that meshes material will be given by the load 2D material function. Okay, so far so good. So I think I've successfully turn back time to where we were. So I'll go ahead and I'll close down the model factory and I'll just look at the renderer. So again, that's the basic shape of our renderer. At the moment, our renderer is going to be complaining at us a little bit. I'll leave that for now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at this point, whoops, at this point, we should have a mesh, you know, currently loaded. But what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to take that mesh's material and construct a handle out of that. The way we do that is go GL, yeah, get texture handle. I've been using NV since I have an NVIDIA card, but I guess ARB is a little more cross-platform maybe. And we just need to pass in the texture. So... I'll go in and I'll say, uh, this one here, get its material. And that's fine. That will create a, um, that will give me an, un uh, 64 bit integer. So I can go ahead and store that. Okay. So by the time we get to the end of this loop, all of the texture handles, all those 64-bit integers have been created. What I'll need to do <clears throat> is push them all, or upload them all onto a buffer. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a buffer. So I'll say gl create buffers. I'm going to create one buffer, and that will be my texture buffer. I'll then go ahead and bind that as a storage buffer because it's going to be a general purpose storage buffer for my shaders to read. And then I will upload from my texture handles into that buffer. So I'll declare GL buffer storage, which is not the same thing as storage buffer. So my target here will be the GL shader storage buffer. The size will be, will go the number of elements in texture handles and the number of texture handles times the size of a unsigned 64 bit in. And then we'll need the data. The data in this case will just be the um, the pointer to the beginning. And for storage flags, I'm going to go from memory. I think that's the most robust. We'll see. Okay. With that set up, I'm then going to bind the I set the binding point of that buffer. So I'm going to set that to binding number zero. So I'm going to bind this to point zero, and that will be my um, my texture buffer that gets bound. Okay. So to step through this, I create. I know I'm stepping through this a lot. I created all of my materials. I got a handle to each material, then I created a buffer, and I uploaded all of those 64-bit unsigned integers to the buffer. Those are the handles. The last thing I'm going to need to do to sort of set this up is I'm going to need to make each of those underlying textures resident on the GPU. Now, if you're saying that that's the same thing as binding, and therefore this is not really a bindless texture, um, I guess, but it is for reasons. So I'm going to loop through all of those handles. And 
I'm going to make each of them. So I'll go GL, whoops, GL, make texture handle resident. Okay, so making the texture handle resident will reserve space in the VRAM, you know, so we're ready to see that thing. Um, when we're not using a texture, we can make it non-resident and we want to be careful about not making things resident when they shouldn't be, because it does have a performance. Well, there's a limited amount of space on the GPU. But in this case, yeah, we're using all of these. Okay, so everything should be initialized, hopefully uploaded to the GPU and ready to go. I'm just going to take a second and try to hunt down. Oh yeah, yeah, let's not do that. And this will probably all be cleaned up anyway, but in theory, we should also be cleaning up the, um, the buffer at least. Anyway, we'll leave that. So what am I going to do? Well, in here, when I render, I no longer need to bind that material because everything was already bound in creation. I'll go ahead and I'll step through and I'm going to change this now instead of being a float it's just going to be an integer that looks fine I'm just checking over my stuff so we bind the mesh model ready to draw we send over the model transform we tell the shader what object we're going to draw and then we go ahead and draw all of the textures are already resident on the gpu ready to go so now i'm just going to pop over to my shaders and modify them one thing i'm going to need to do is i'm going to need to declare that i'm using the bindless texture extension and the way we do that is we put this extension and then the extension name, which is GLARB Architecture Review Board Bindless Texture. And I'm going to say require. Probably don't need this here. And we're going to output just a, a VEC2, in which case we do not need to bolt this on. We can just pass the vertex texture coordinate along. Okay, all looks fine. Now on the fragment side. So for the fragment shader, I'm going to also need to require the bindless texture extension. Oh, and this is a big thing. What's going on here? 330, I'm gonna change that to version 460. And while I'm at it, I should probably, where am I setting this up? My render system? Just keep talking to myself for a bit. Um, set up OpenGL. Oh, here we go. Version 4. 4.6. Okay, it's probably fine. Okay, so, got all this stuff. I'm going to need to declare the buffer which has the texture handles. And what I'll do so I'll dec declare it like this. So I'll have for my layout at binding point zero using the SCD 40, uh, 430 memory layout so that the shader compiler doesn't reorder. And it, or how could you? It's a 64-bit integer, but just for safety. So I'm going to have texture handles and the concept of, sorry, the context of texture handles is... A, an array of samplers. So I'll have sampler 2D textures, and that is a sizeless array. Okay, so we take in texture coordinate, and we're also going to have a uniform, and that is the, the object type. Okay, so before I do anything, the first thing I'm going to need to do is access into that buffer and get the appropriate sampler. And then I can use that sampler 
to um, sample from it, basically. Okay, so fingers crossed. Let's click and see what happens. Hmm. See if that helps. I think Glad might have the um, Riot definition. Okay, blackness. But we've got an error. Undefined variable object. Hmm, okay. That's on line 19. Oh, yeah. It should be object type. Okay. No errors. I forgot I forgot what frame rate we were getting before. But for one thing this is working. So hey, that's a start. And we're getting about 43 42 frames per second. Something like that. So yeah, I am pretty pretty happy with that because we got the thing working and we didn't get too many errors and there we have it so in the next video what I'm going to be doing is trying to wah, trying to lump some of these resources together so that we don't need to keep continually rebinding different VAOs although this is not necessarily immediately going to yield big results I feel but it is necessary for GPU driven rendering. So anyway, there we have it. Hope you had fun and I will see you again in the next one. Bye. Hi everybody. I just want to take a second to say thank you to my, what's going on here? It's pretty cool. To say thank you to my channel supporters. Listen, I'm community funded. If you want to support me, it's $2.50 a month. That's about the amount of value I think these videos bring. They're pretty cool. If you do not want to financially support, that is totally fine. None of it is expected. The best thing you can do is get involved, comment, let me know what sort of stuff you'd like to see and if there are any improvements that I can make. Because sometimes I get busy with life, but I am trying to make the best content, the best educational content that I can. So, very big thank you to Antonin Karet, Declan, Endelon Studios, Isaiah Meyer, Jason Coleman, Matthew Derick, Moim, Shreyar, Skibbity Pop, and Maxim Shukim. Thank you so much, my dudes. I really do appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. And I will see you again soon. Bye.